Hi, and welcome back. So a new study with 160,000 participants has looked at the effect of vitamin D on cardiovascular disease and also all-cause mortality. And the results may leave you a little bit confused. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Anne Dragowaskaway that looked into a study that was published in the journal Nutrients which looked into vitamin D's effects on cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality as part of a huge meta-analysis. And there are links in the description below to the study and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. According to the CDC, between 6.7 and 36.9% of Americans take vitamin D supplements. That's depending on their age group. And I'm guessing this must be similar in most parts of the first world. This makes it the second most popular dietary supplement in the USA. Vitamin D is essential for calcium absorption in the gut. It also regulates calcium, phosphorus, and glucose metabolism, and it supports healthy bone growth. It also helps in the reduction of inflammation, the modulation of cell growth, and also in immune function. Many of our genes are controlled by vitamin D, and the vitamin D receptor is present in many of our body's tissues. It's not surprising then that low levels of vitamin D have been associated with multiple disorders, including cardiovascular problems, diabetes, cancer, and numerous inflammatory disorders. Due to vitamin D's essential roles in the body, much research has been done on its impact on mortality risk. However, the reported results are inconsistent. This inconsistency, the limitations of previous research and the emergence of new studies has prompted researchers to analyze existing and new research into vitamin D supplementation. In this new study, the researchers looked at the results of randomized controlled trials that were published between 1983 and 2022. They wanted to know if vitamin D supplements affected overall mortality and wanted to know if it was linked to deaths from cardiovascular disease. So the studies that were included in the analysis singled out all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, non-cardiovascular mortality, and cardiovascular morbidities. The last one on the list are cardiovascular issues that do not necessarily actually lead to death. Studies included in the analysis investigated vitamin D supplementation both with and without calcium added. The total number of participants in the analyzed studies was more than 160,000 and they had a mean age of 66. However, it didn't include pregnant or lactating women frail or elderly patients, or those with serious medical conditions such as stroke, COVID-19, and HIV. The studies in the analysis varied in their design and also in their quality. To account for this, the researchers divided the studies into three groups, low, fair, and good quality. This was done by assessing the risk of bias with a high quality study having a low risk of bias. Out of the 80 studies that were chosen, 11 were found to have a high risk of bias. 34 studies were identified as having a fair risk of bias, and 35 were labeled as good quality and a low risk of bias. The good quality studies included over 120,000 participants, and the lowest quality studies represented just over 1,000 participants. The researchers concluded that vitamin D supplementation did reduce the risk of all-cause mortality. When they analysed just the good and the fair quality studies together, they saw the same effect. However, when the good or fair quality studies were analysed separately, the effect of vitamin D supplementation on all-cause mortality was close to being statistically significant, but it didn't quite reach the mark. This association was not observed when just the poor quality studies were analyzed separately. 
The researchers then analyzed 38 randomized controlled trials that examined cardiovascular mortality. No link was found between taking vitamin D and a lower risk of cardiovascular mortality, whether the studies were analyzed together or they were analyzed separately. The association between vitamin D supplementation and non-cardiovascular mortality risk again was close to statistical significance, but again it didn't quite reach the mark. Similarly, significance was not achieved when analyzing all three groups separately. The authors also analyzed the effect of vitamin D supplementation on specific conditions such as heart attack, stroke, heart failure and other adverse cardiovascular events. There was no association between vitamin D supplementation and a lower risk of cardiovascular morbidities. Let's take a look at some of the limitations. This study used data obtained from 80 different studies that varied on many, many different levels. For example, participants in the studies all took different doses of vitamin D. The studies may also be done at different times during the year, which affects the natural exposure to vitamin D. Additionally, participants in each of those studies could differ in age, gender, base levels of vitamin D before the study, etc. These factors could have most definitely influenced the overall results, but they were not accounted for in the analysis, therefore limiting, severely limiting the report's overall conclusions. The authors said that they believe there is a need for well-planned and executed studies to address the question of vitamin D supplementation and mortality risk. They note that in some cases, adding substandard results to the analysis changed the overall results and thus could have affected the study's recommendations. I think it's also ironic that they highlight a study quality when their meta-analysis failed to include so many obvious confounding factors. When talking about vitamin D as a supplement, vitamin K2 must also be mentioned. There are two main forms of vitamin K. Vitamin K1, which is found in plant foods such as leafy greens, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, etc. Vitamin K1 prevents bleeding through the blood clotting cascade and vitamin K2, which is found in some animal products and some fermented foods. Vitamin K2 can be further divided into several subtypes, the most important being MK4 and MK7. One of vitamin K2's most important functions is to regulate calcium deposition afforded by vitamin D3. In other words, it promotes the calcification of our bones and our teeth and prevents the calcification of our soft tissues, things such as blood vessels, our kidneys, and also our heart. So if you do want a supplement, where can you buy vitamin D3 and K2 in combination? There are many companies that will sell you these vitamins, but of the big three, Pro Health at present does not sell vitamin D3 and K2 in combination. However, Renew by Science and Duna Age both carry vitamin D3 K2 and both offer the 10% My NMN discount at checkout. And there are links in the description below. And just be aware that they are affiliate links. So if you do use them, I will receive some remuneration from the company. And if you do use them, I'd like to say now in advance, thank you very much indeed for your support. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. If you've heard me talk about vitamin D before, you'll know that vitamin D is not a vitamin. It's actually a hormone. The way to check whether or not you've got enough in your system is to have a blood test. That result will come back as deficient, insufficient or sufficient. If you want to get yourself into the sufficient range, which I suggest you do, you can either expose yourself to more sunlight or talk to a medical professional and then decide what dosing protocol uh, you're going to pursue. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below about this study we uh, that we, we spoke about. Um, personally, I think it was a waste of time. The study was about vitamin D supplementation on cardiovascular disease and all-cause all mortality. For the researchers not to establish a baseline of vitamin D in the participants and then at least know what dose they were taking seems absolutely ridiculous to me. Um, so a pointless study um, that I don't think was ever going to prove anything whatsoever. Let me know in the comments below, in the comments of the YouTube video, what do you think about this particular study?